time for another Dirt Daily. I am back in the shop and today I'm gonna work on this. This is the fuel pump, fuel sending unit for the Land Cruiser that I've been working on. But before I dive into that, let's do a quick recap of Dirt Every Day. Uh, if you are a subscriber to the Motor Trend Plus app, You've probably seen the first half of season 11 of our Dirt Every Day show. Um, we started out with Mom's Spaghetti. We did the tiny tires on the tracker. We did Baja Bugs. Uh, we tried to get my M715 to go four-wheeling by putting better axles under it, and it really needs a better engine. Uh, we did some Honda Trail 125 bikes out in Moab. That was awesome. And then uh, we kind of wrapped it up with some four runners. This one, Pond Scum. We took that thing out to the snow in Oregon with our friends in their four runners. And then we also did the Ranchota, which is that Toyota truck with a Rancho uh, body, Ranchero body on it. And we built that into a monster truck and did some, some cool stuff crushing cars. Um, sorry about all the noise. I'm in the shop and my shop has been infested with birds. Uh, it's kind of springtime, summertime, and the birds are going crazy making nests and laying eggs. Plus there's a big road out in front of the shop and lots of people rip up and down that road because it's the weekend and they all have their hot rods out. Uh, so there's gonna be a little bit of background noise. So I'll try to speak up. So we had a good half of the season. We have another half of the season coming later this year. Um, I don't have exact dates probably in the fall because it's kind of when they aired it last year and we have another six or so episodes on the Motor Trend Plus app so check that out um, some good stuff and we will be hopefully right back at it uh, wrenching and building more trucks for next season but before we go back to dirt every day I'm going to try and get my Land Cruiser running and today's project is this fuel pump now um, I know that I need a fuel pump and there's lots of ways to, lots of places to get a fuel pump. I ordered mine from a company called Slee Off-Road and they are based in Colorado. They've been working on Land Cruisers for a long time. Um, they ordered, basically they got me parts direct from Toyota. So they're not the cheapest. Um, but if you're a Toyota guy, most Toyota guys are kind of Toyota fanatics and they will only put Toyota stuff on or they really only want to put Toyota stuff on. I am not a Toyota fanatic, but I also took their advice and ordered all Toyota stuff. You could probably do this through like rockauto.com for like half the price, um, but I don't know that, I don't know how long it'll last. This thing has lasted a long time. Um, and part of the problem is the type of gas that we use these days doesn't last very long and it messes up the pumps after it sits for a while. So I opted to spend the extra money and get all these parts. I'm gonna rattle through the part numbers um, and tell you what I got. 23221-6604 is the 80 series fuel pump. Um, it's pretty simple, it's gonna plug in to the plug on the sending unit. There's gonna be a hose that comes out of here and a strainer out of the bottom. And that thing alone, $376. So that was the bulk of the expense. Um, after that, you want this 23217-1649. That is the filter that goes on the bottom of the pump to make sure you're not sucking up a bunch of junk into the pump. Uh, you guys might remember when I did that F250, I put a fuel pump in it. I didn't drain the old gas and then that new fuel pump that I put in it died like within a month. So I've already drained all the gas out. I took a, I have an old like electric fuel pump and I like plug the one end of the hose into the fuel tank and the other end into a five gallon bucket. And I sucked all this nasty, stinky old gas out of the tank, um, which is kind of a bummer because I just put some gas in it to test it. So that's kind of money down the drain. Uh, and then you might be asking, well, what do you do with old gas? I just took that five gallon bucket and I set it outside in the sun. And within like a week, 
7% of it had just evaporated. Um, you don't want to just pour it on your lawn. You don't want to pour it down the drain. It's not really good for the environment, but gasoline will just kind of evaporate. Don't put it somewhere where someone's going to have flame or sparks or whatever, because you'll have a big mess. You have a flaming mess. Um, so what else? Uh, filter. There is a little tiny clip. This teeny tiny clip here is kind of hard to see. That little clip holds the filter onto the bottom of the pump. So you're going to need that. Um, there's a thing called the cushion. Oh, what is that clip number? 232190301 is the clip. Um, there's this cushion, which is 232497415. This is the piece that kind of cushions it on the bottom of the arm. It's coming down from the sending unit. Um, the old one is just kind of sticky, gooey garbage. So that part probably has been affected by gasoline over all the years. Um, and plus it's at the very bottom, so it's almost always in gas. Um, and then I bought this piece of hose, literally this little tiny like inch and a half, inch and three quarter piece of hose is 10 bucks. Why is that hose so expensive? Because there are special hose that you wanna use when it's inside the fuel tank. Um, there's fuel hose, which is not the same as submerged fuel hose. You want um, a submerged fuel hose will sit under the fuel level constantly and it won't swell up, it won't get gooey and sticky and garbage. I don't know what this hose is made of, but it better darn well be made out of that really good stuff so that it doesn't do that because it was 10 bucks. Um, I have bought that type of fuel hose before. My rock buggy had been sitting for a couple years and the fuel line inside of it had gotten all gross and I found that specific type of hose. I don't remember what it's called right now. And then Toyota uses these little clips, which you could probably just use a hose clamp but when I was ordering everything, I said, just send me everything. So that's what I got. I got these little tiny clips. And those, uh, the fuel hose 232-39-1101 is the fuel hose. And then the clip 90467-1206. Um, all of that stuff was over 400 bucks. Kind of ridiculous because I know I could get it cheaper somewhere else, but I'm trying to do it right on this truck and make sure that it lasts another 300,000 miles. So now what? Now we just got to get this thing out of here. Um, there's two clips right here. Oh, I was going to go over a couple other things. This is your float for your fuel level. And then there's a little thing right here. It's this funny little module and there's a wire going up. And my research has told me that this little module is your low fuel light. So if you think that this is the, this is the top of the tank, this is the bottom of the tank, um, and then this thing floats up and down as the fuel level goes up and down. Here, I'll do it this way so you can see. Then this little module is above the filter by about, uh, I'd say, three quarters of an inch. So if the light comes on on your dash in your Land Cruiser and it says, hey, low fuel, it's basically saying the fuel level has dropped below that. You still have from there to the bottom of this filter to get fuel, but that little thing activates the light. Does that work? I don't know. Um, I wasn't looking for the fuel light. I was just trying to get the thing to run. So. I'll probably hose this down with some carb clean um, as well as the float. The float looks pretty good. It doesn't feel like it's crumbling or falling apart. Um, so that's how this system works. Oh, and there's also this line right here, which is the return line. So the fuel that comes back from the fuel and fuel rail up on the engine dumps back in. So which is kind of neat because the tank has kind of a baffled little area where fuel, this will dump fuel right back in so that it can get picked right back up as you need more fuel. All right, let's take this apart. 
and get ready to swap the new person. I'm going to set this down. Um, I'm doing all this on a towel here to kind of keep any sort of grinding dust or other garbage out of the new parts. Um, it's going to be pretty simple. You just kind of remove these clips, slide those up out of the way. You can see there the clips, they're just kind of, you pinch them with some pliers and slide them up. And then we need to get all of this out of the, oh, the next thing you should probably do is if you have some channel locks, um, grab that piece of hose there, just give it a slight twist. Hear that noise? Um, you want that to twist a little so that it's not locked on there. Um, it probably also wouldn't hurt to come in with a razor blade and slice that piece of hose. But now let's see if this will pop out of the bracket. Uh, look at all that goo. See all that black goo right there? That's that little cushion piece. I'm going to move all this so that I'm not dumping old fuel sending unit dirt right onto the... All right, so this is slowly sliding off of the outlet side. And what you don't want to do is stretch these wires that are going to go into the pump. So we want to, in fact, I think what we'll do is we'll twist this and try to get those wires out. Come in here gently with some pliers. Um, grab that and see if it will just, it goes. That pops right out. So this little wiring plug, that wiring plug there is what powers and grounds the pump. And then this all slides off. That's your old pump. That's that cushion, which is just kind of sticky, gooey mess. Um, you can see the old filter is full of garbage. And then there's a little tiny clip right there that holds the filter on. So, um, I'm replacing these two clips with new clips, so those can go. In fact, I'll just take the new clips and I'll slide them on there for now. And then this is what the cushion is supposed to look like. And this is what it looks like after sitting in gas for years. Just kind of deteriorated through that right in the trash. Um, so there is some residue on the bottom here. We're gonna just kind of scrape that off. I'm gonna shut off the camera and go get a screwdriver and clean this thing up. And then I will turn it back on when we start putting it back together. I'm back. Uh, I got the old pump off. <clears throat> I cleaned up the bracket. I scraped off a bunch of old goo. Um, now let's put this thing together. <clears throat> First thing, we're gonna take these little clips and slide them up there on the inlet hose. And then we are going to set this here and put on the filter. The filter is gonna go on the bottom of the fuel pump. There's a little cap that it comes with. You take that off. Try to be very careful of keeping this as clean as possible. And you wanna press the filter onto the bottom of the pump.
Okay. Okay. There you can see how the filter goes on the pump. Then there is this little tiny clip. And that has to press over this rod, in effect, locking the filter into place. That's a little tricky. Okay, I pressed that little clip on using a four millimeter nut driver and that held the uh, filter on. <clears throat> then I slid that expensive piece of hose onto the pump and slid it up onto the outlet side of the sending unit and plugged in the plug. Everything is all back together. Um, don't forget the little bumper at the bottom cushion that is what the fuel pump sits on, which is probably just to keep it as low to the bottom as possible, but also uh, give it some cushion, I guess, if you're off-roading. And that's it. That's about how you put in a new fuel pump for a Land Cruiser. Now we just take this back out, put it back in the truck. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time.